This is AutoLine Daily reporting on the global automotive industry. We got the April sales numbers and they came in much weaker than the analysts expected. Bloomberg surveyed a number of analysts and on average they forecasted the SAR would come in at 16.9 million. Instead, the seasonally adjusted annual rate came in at only 16.4 million. One reason for the drop? Merrill Lynch reports that the car companies cut their sales incentives by 6.5%. All told, automakers sold 1.3 million vehicles, but that was down 5.6% from a year ago. Passenger cars fell 5.6%, while truck sales fell 1%. Remember, yesterday we pointed out that the sales of full-size vans are going strong, and they're one reason why the truck segment is holding up better. Sales of the big vans were up nearly 12%. But overall, only five automakers saw their sales go up. JLR, Nissan, Subaru, Volkswagen, and Tesla. In fact, Tesla's results are surprisingly strong. According to Ward's estimates, Tesla sold over 20,000 cars last month. That means it outsold every single luxury brand except for Mercedes and BMW. Remember, there's 12 other luxury brands in the U.S. market. That's a pretty impressive number from Tesla, considering its customers can no longer claim a $7,500 tax credit and considering that Tesla is limited or banned from selling cars in 20 states. Hey, be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours this afternoon. Gary Vasilash is hosting a roundtable with Stephanie Brindley from IHS Market, Brett Smith from the Center for Automotive Research, and the one and only auto extremist, Peter DeLorenzo. Join us at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Mitsubishi was once a leader in technology and styling. In 2002, It sold 345,000 cars in the U.S. market, but through neglect or incompetence, sales completely collapsed to only 54,000 units in 2009. Now it's trying to claw its way back. It only has four models, all of them sitting on old platforms, and new platforms from the Renault-Nissan Alliance are still a couple of years away. Until then, it's relying on fresh styling and low prices. In September this year, it's coming out with a refreshed Outlander Sport that features a much bolder front end with a new fascia, new fenders, new hood, and LED lamps. The rear fascia was changed and LED tail lamps were added. Inside, they added an 8-inch screen and used better materials, but everything electric, electronic, and mechanical is carryover. But the new strategy is working. Sales topped 100,000 units for the last two years, and interestingly, Mitsubishi says it's not stealing market share from competitors. Instead, it's pulling customers out of used cars. Kia revealed the pricing for the Nero EV, $39,500 without the federal tax credit. With it, the price drops to about $32,000, but that makes it about $1,500 more expensive than a Hyundai Kona EV, which is a little bit smaller than the Nero. The the top-of-the-line Nero EV starts at $45,000 without the credit. Volkswagen is launching a new initiative to make sure that people with disabilities are taken into account when it's developing autonomous vehicles. People with disabilities could be the biggest benefactors of this new technology, which is why VW is collaborating with disability groups to get their input on design and functionality of self-driving cars. For example, it hosted a meeting last month to find solutions for securing wheelchairs in autonomous cars. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Automakers in China are running into headwinds that are far stronger than expected. Most automakers gave very conservative forecasts for their earnings in the first quarter, but Merrill Lynch says, that earnings still came in weaker than expected. Two key problems right now in China, too much inventory, severe price competition, and problems selling EVs because the Chinese government just cut EV subsidies. 
Data from LMC Automotive shows that to reduce bloated inventory levels, automakers are now cutting production faster than sales are falling. Automakers will struggle to maintain profits for the rest of the year, but analysts expect the Chinese market to perform better in the second half. Our friends at Wards just revealed the winners of their annual 10 Best Interiors list. So without further ado, the winners are the Bentley Continental GT, BMW M850i, Genesis G70, Hyundai Santa Fe, Jeep Gladiator, Lincoln Nautilus, Mercedes-Benz A220, Nissan Kicks, Toyota RAV4, and the Volvo V60. The judges choose these vehicles based on design aesthetics, comfort, ergonomics, materials, fit and finish, as well as the user friendliness of displays and controls. Hey, before we go, you got to check out this video clip that our viewer, Jack Sandin, sent in to us. I really enjoy that clip. And if you see something that you think would be good to share on AutoLine Daily, send it our way. Well, with that, we wrap up today's report, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow.